Hi everybody and welcome back to Sit and Knit for a Bit with Arne and Carlos. And we are as always your hosts Arne and Carlos <laughs> and uh, Freya and Helmer are with us. Uh, Freya is barking at the moose right now yeah. and Helmer so far so good. He is lying by Arne's feet very quiet and uh, so behaving far. very well so far. so far but uh, as you all know when you have pets you never know what's gonna happen they're very spontaneous and they don't actually care that we're recording this right now no. and for those of you who are new to our YouTube channel you might like to know that this is a podcast that is not only about knitting because we do a lot of other things yeah. if you think it's a knitting podcast but the reason why it's called sit and knit for a bit is that you can sit and knit for a bit while you're listening to yeah. us. Yeah, or if you don't want to sit and knit for a bit and listen to us, you can do nothing or you can do embroidery or crochet. Whatever you want to do is fine by us. Yeah. I mean, we're here to recap and talk about our lives. We live in rural Norway. We actually live on top of a mountain, uh, very isolated in a very beautiful uh, location. Um, and uh, in the past, we used to travel a lot. We are designers. Um, we have been working as designers for over 20 years. Um, originally, we come from the fashion industry. We used to have our own label, our own brand. Mm -hmm. And then eventually we went over to doing uh, knitting um, or knitwear design and then uh, knitting patterns, books. Yep. And we do a lot of uh, stuff. Um, so we used to have this career and we used to travel all over the place. Nowadays, we are traveling less and less, uh, especially during the pandemic. We weren't able to travel at, at least all. the two last years. Two last years. Traveled. Yeah. And that's when we started. That's when we started our podcast originally and uh, this year we uh, were a little bit unsure of whether we would be able to follow through every single Wednesday but Arne so far so good yeah we have managed to do it and yeah. we will probably film somewhere else in yeah. the world as well because now the last weeks we've been in the same room yeah. because we are in our House. How, what do you call this room now? It's a sewing well, it's room. The, yeah, <laughs> it, it used to be our dining room, but it's been occupied by uh, our sewing machines. And we are working on some sewing projects right now, so we'll, uh, let's call it our sewing room. Sewing room. Uh, we live in an old train station and we've been uh, remodeling and renovating this house for 20 years. Not only the house, but the whole property. And we have a really big warehouse on our property that we are converting into a studio. But unfortunately, due to the pandemic, um, things stopped in 2020. And we haven't been able to uh, continue. If everything would have gone according to plans, we would have had our sewing room there. But um, now we're we're in our house. Yeah, so. We can use it in the summer. Yeah, but not in the winter. Mm. It's not the uh, isolated. That? Isolated. Isolated. Yet. So, but we have some. There have been some really big things happening this week. Yeah, uh, I mean. You know, big, big, things, big things. Yeah, big things. Considering uh, our life here, we are um, still not traveling as much as we thought we would. We will, though, travel in April, I guess. So you will probably be seeing some of our podcasts from other countries. We'll see about that. Uh, yeah. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. But uh, we'll yeah, we bring the camera. We'll bring the camera yeah. if we go. Anyway, yeah. This week uh, we've had um, a lot of stuff happening. Uh, among other things, uh, somebody's moved, or something has moved in with us. What do we call him? I, I don't think we've given him a name yet. He needs a name. But we might give him one today. We have to give him a name. Yeah. So those, of you, yeah. So those of you following our podcast, uh, we talked about um, getting an electric car a couple of weeks ago. And, uh, and we borrowed one. Yeah, we borrowed an electric car that we test drove for a few days. Yeah. And we're getting an electric car. I mean, it is on its way. And the one we borrowed, we called him Elvis because he's electric. Mm -hmm. Okay. L in Norwegian is electricity. L in electric. But we decided to, the one we're having, actually we're not buying, we're leasing mm -hmm. because there's a lot of stuff happening with electric cars. So we figured out it's maybe we shouldn't buy one. Not yet, because anyway. If we, if we lease the car, we can have it for like it's three years. Three years. Yeah. And then Get in, a new one. in three years, a lot of things could have happened. Maybe we can go further, mm. like longer, what you call that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Miley? Yeah, no. miles. Miles. Yeah. So we decided to have leasing, yeah. leased a car. But to have that car, we also needed to have that... Um, the charging station. Charging station. And we have to find a name for the charging Yeah, the station. charging station is very smart. It has its own uh, app. 
and uh, we got an instruction book that we haven't read yet but apparently we can program it to do all sorts of things uh, um, well with the car anyway <laughs> well it can actually get out in and out of the garage by itself the car the car yeah with the remote control yeah, oh no, that's not connected. That's not connected. No, no. <laughs> no it's, I'm, we, I'm not good at this. No, me <laughs> neither. So uh, it'll be interesting to see. We're very brave because we live in the, as we said, in an isolated part of Norway. But Norway is very advanced when it comes to electric cars. I actually looked it up, Arne. And Norway is the country in the world with the most electric cars per inhabitants. We are, mm. we are way, uh, let's see, we are double, we have double as many electric cars as the next country on the list, which is Iceland. But then Iceland had a lot of cars because they are fewer people. Yeah, but we have more per inhabitant per inhabit here. Yeah. This is the country with the most electric cars in the world. And because of that, we have a great infrastructure already. Uh, just, you know, we just drive um, three kilometers down the mountain and we've got 20 charging stations by our gas station there. So, and every gas station in Norway now has its uh, charging stations yeah. as well for electric cars. So it's easy to, to do that. And um, another interesting fact, uh, Norway, um, Norway produces a lot of the electricity that is shipped down to Europe. So electricity in Norway is cheaper uh, than in um, most European countries. Right now it's not so cheap. No, but, but it's still, still cheaper. Still, it's still yeah. cheaper. And still. for those curious, uh, what kind of electricity uh, we produce in Norway? I mean, which source of electricity? It's hydropower. You know what hydropower is? Water. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. That's our main source of. I guess most of it. Is yeah, water. we have all the beautiful mountains, and we have all the gorgeous waterfalls, and we have. But I, a lot of that stuff here. Do you remember my brother told us that he knew a guy who has put this something solar, solar panels solar panels on on the roofs, and they produce so much energy that they're actually selling energy. Oh. Well, maybe so, we should do that. I think we should look into that. Maybe we mm. should have that in the future. Problem though here is that it snows a lot in the winter. So but you can have it on the wall. Walls we is have a good idea. Walls. Yeah, we have a lot of wall space. Yeah, anyway, we're getting an electric car. We're super excited. It's going to be a brand new way of life for us. We're going to have to do our planning. You know, we go to Oslo, the capital of our country, Oslo, is uh, a two and a half hour by car. Um, the car that we're getting in the summer will be able to drive back and forth mm. to Oslo um, without having to charge it. But in winter, we may have to charge once on our way back from, from Oslo. Yeah. And we do go from time to time. We go uh, to have meetings in the city. Um, this oh. week uh, on Thursday, we're going to do um, a lecture uh, down in uh, a place which is a little bit further from Oslo, uh, further south. Mm. It's going to be our first lecture yeah. in two years, but Arne. That will be strange. Yeah. That will be... With an audience. Very. A live audience. We haven't done that in Norway for many years. Yeah. Because we, we've been traveling abroad doing, doing lectures, yeah. not in Norway. Mm, like, no. when we didn't have a new book out, there were no lectures. No. So, this will be interesting. It'll be interesting, yeah. The last... A lot of things have happened in yeah. two years. Yeah, so, so the, the last year that we traveled extensively in Norway to hold lectures, was in 2015, yeah. so six years six ago. Six years ago. And then from 2015 until 2020, March 2020, we were touring abroad. We were going a lot to the US, a lot to the UK, uh, Germany, and then we've been to Australia um, and doing most of our touring abroad and then some sporadical lecturing here in Norway. And then after the pandemic, we haven't had an audience um, and it's something that I do like I have to say I love uh, mm. I love doing our lectures because they're kind of like a stand-up show actually a lot of people do tend to uh, maybe we have laugh we're, we're out of training I think we're definitely gonna be we out have of to training. practice before yeah. we leave yeah we have to practice on Wednesday well, well it is well, Wednesday we not practice yeah <laughs> <laughs> we have a lecture tomorrow or <laughs> No, we don't. No, we don't. Because no. we actually pre-record sit in it for a bit, so it's always recorded a few days or a but week to, in but advance. But when this was filmed, we we're actually doing a lecture oh, this yeah. week. But yeah. when you see this, we We've have already, already done, done, it. done it. So next. So maybe next time we can tell you how it, how it went. went. Yeah. But yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be something standing in front of an audience, and maybe there's gonna be two, three hundred people, probably three hundred people. I'm not surprised if there is. 
and uh, we're going to be doing our stand-up routine again for the first time in two years. Oh, yeah. this is scary. It is a little scary, <laughs> but you know what? I mean, we did it. We've done it so many years now that I think yeah. we should uh, we should be okay. And remember, we got a lot of new material. We have a lot of new stuff because so. uh, before the pandemic, we had kind of like a set of of you know slides that we showed with a lot of jokes in in between. And now we can joke a lot about the pandemic, I guess. Or well, maybe we should. I mean, not joke oh. about the pandemic but about our what, situation what our situation what we have we gone through i mean not, not that we got sick I, i'm thinking more of, of the bizarre situation of being locked down in in this house for two years mm. which was very bizarre that was very bizarre. yeah and we can talk about you know jokes like when you were hiding behind the bushes exactly. waiting for the mailman because you didn't want to get covid and stuff like that yeah. Obviously but not joke to, about. We, we still have to find a name for that charger. That was actually what yeah. we were talking about. And now we have digressed. Yeah, now we have digressed. And now people might think that we are taking the whole pandemic thing very lightly, that we would not joke about that. But no, I mean, we're joking so, about our situation in the pandemic. So relax. So relax. Yeah. Relax. Yeah, we, yeah, we have to figure <laughs> out a name for the charger. and uh, Because I, the car is going to be called Elfrid. Yeah. Because our Beetle is called Humlen. Humlen. And the electric car need a name. Yeah, and because the one El, we have now doesn't have a name. No, and because El is electricity in Norwegian, we're gonna call her because it's a she, and we're gonna call her Elfrid, which is a very typical Norwegian name. It could be Elbjerg also. Yeah, but I like Elfrid. Yeah, Elfrid, Elfrid. It's shorter. Yeah. Elfrid. Elfrid is nice. Elfrid. So yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we like giving names to all our little uh, things that we that help us make our life easier. So, uh, but the one the charger that must be the Mister Lola Lola. Yeah, because he's uh, <laughs> he's doing his business with, with we, Elfrid. Yeah, when we drive the car yeah. into the garage, mm -hmm. Mister Lola Lola. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> Am I blushing? No, you're not. <laughs> You're like Easter yellow. I know, yeah. I, yeah, yeah East, I mean, it's not Easter yet, but spring is here and uh, we've been having lovely weather here. It's been nice and sunny and, uh, and we've been going out, uh, taking the dogs uh, not for skiing. long walks. We have not been skiing this year. No. But we have so much to do. Like, there's always things to do. And, and hmm. the, the, the last days I've been doing embroidery again yeah. because we made that uh, this pillow. Can, can we talk about that now? Yeah, sure. So, because look at this one. I made the mandrill pillow that we have designed. Yeah, mandrill. That's the, mandrill. is that the animal in Africa, the one with the pink bottom? Yeah, or blue bottom. I think it can be also blue. The bottom, blue, yeah. blue or pink, yeah. And then it's got a very distinctive uh, it's face. It's a beautiful face. So this is our mandrill pillow. He's and blue. But this was actually quite hard to make because the canvas is very thin, so you have to go up and down, up and down, up and down. And then I bought another canvas, mm. this one. So we're making a new one. Yeah, this is going to be really. So this beautiful. is actually bigger, and this one is much quicker because you can go. Like and the this. colors are gorgeous. I think this is so much yeah, better in size as well. And look at the size; it's yeah actually much bigger mm -hmm. in a way. Yeah. So this is so fun I, and I, you know, I'm so lucky when I do this. Mm. I was sitting upstairs doing the embroidery. I was listening to the Amanda Lear radio on the Sonos. <laughs> There's so much nice music from the 80s yeah. and the 70s. And I was doing this and the sun was shining. And, and while I was embroidering all these bright colors, I felt so lucky. Yeah. I it think was spring. I think many of our viewers, if they are um, in the U.S., they may not know who Amanda Lear is. But uh, you may know that Arne and I, but Arne in particular, is um, has a crush on Dolly Parton. Actually, I have one too. Uh, but Arne is uh, one of her uh, biggest diehard fans. So Dolly Parton is a one of our icons here. But there's many others. And Amanda Lear is, um, Amanda Lear is one of them. another one that we really love. But I believe she is uh, more well known here in Europe, uh, Maybe. especially in France and in Italy. Um, she, uh, for those of you who may recall um, the great uh, surreal um, surrealist painter Salvador Dali. Yeah, we showed the cookbook yeah, a few weeks Yeah, exactly. Ago. Yeah. So Salvador Dali's muse was Amanda Lear. 
And Amanda Lear um, actually lived with him in the Hotel Meurice oh, cool. in Paris. That um, is posh. Yeah, that is very posh. It's a beautiful <laughs> hotel in, 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 in the, uh, next to the Tuileries yeah. Gardens in and, Paris. And Amanda Lear is also doing, if, if she's still doing it, she, I think is, she yeah. did talk shows oh, in yeah, France yeah. because yeah. she is so smart. Yeah, she, she's very intelligent. Yeah. But she was originally, she became famous as the muse of Salvador Dali. And then um, after he died, she got um, a um, she got a artist uh, um, like a singer career um, here in Europe. Especially, she also was a, a, a model. She was a model. She yeah. was on the cover of one of the records from Roxy Music. That's true. She's yes. She's in her black like leather clothes. Yeah. And she's having a black panther in a leash. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I don't, don't remember she, the name of that. Yeah, she was. I in, heard that Roxy Music. The Roxy Music music is coming on vinyl now. Yeah, and All they're of re, them is re yeah they're re did, they're re doing it. Yeah, I'm gonna have that. Also. Me too. Yeah, I like that. We love Roxy. Music. Yeah, we like them. Anyway, Amanda Lear, <laughs> Amanda Lear, a big uh, muse for Salvador Dali, a model, and then she had a pop career, uh, singer, and she's huge in Italy. I mean, huge there, and also in in France. Yeah. Um, and we like her a lot. She's we got. Have, I think we have almost all the vinyl records that she had. Yeah, Maybe. and I and I and there's we should bring them out and show them another yeah. time. There's one. Uh, no, we can't show them. No, exactly. That's what I was gonna say. <laughs> we can't show because uh, you have a story of when you were. How old were you? You were a big fan of her when you were a kid. I was a big fan when I was in. How old were you? Primary you, school. Yeah. How old were you when you got that record? I must have been like. 12? I don't know. 12 maybe. Maybe 12. I went to the record shop in Lillehammer and. Because I had I had some of the Amanda Lear. I didn't buy them in, in the right order because I discovered her and I just bought what I found. Mm. And I, re I think the first one was Finks and then I had Diamonds for Breakfast. And then there was this other one, Sweet Revenge. I think it was that one or was it I'm a photographer. I'm a photographer. I don't know. One of, I think it was the one we'll have to take a look in our collection and see. Because I, I bought the record and then I remember I, the, the guy in the shop said you can buy you can buy uh, cheaper porn in the kiosk. Oh yeah, in the in the <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, and I was like, what? I, I was so embarrassed because the reason why I said it was when you opened the the record, there was a picture of her topless. Topless. Mm -hmm. Maybe in his his word in in his head that was porn. I guess. I don't think that's. Porn. But you didn't know until you got home why he said that. You must have been like very perplexed. Why why is he saying that? And then when you got home, she was naked you... on the cover. Also, I think she was almost. Naked on not on the cover. No, it's it was on the inside. pull out. When you pull, no, no, no. It's the you've got the the. No, sleeve. I wasn't shocked, but I. No, no, no. What I mean is because you've got, <laughs> listen, you've got the sleeve, right? So this is the sleeve, yeah. and then when you pull out the record, it's in a paper square. That's the one, That's the one where, she, where she was topless, yeah. and you probably didn't know that, so that when he said that. You got really embarrassed, yeah. right? And then when you got home and you opened it, you're like, oh, okay, I get it. Why he said that? I guess. I guess, but it was very embarrassing. Embarrassing. Yeah. Like, why did he say that? But it didn't stop you. Of course not. No, of course not. And yeah, we love her music. So uh, <laughs> if you ever, yeah, you could, if you do, if you've got Spotify, just uh, Google or look for Amanda Lear. So Amanda and then Lear, L E A R. There was and a lot of rumors. Enjoy. There was a lot of rumors about her. It yeah. was said that she once was a man and she changed into I, a woman. I don't believe that. I don't know. But there was, she was, there was a lot of rumors spinning around yeah. her. I think maybe she built her um, image. image on yeah. that. That was cool. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, that's one of our icons. Yeah. So, she's uh, an icon. We really she's like her. Icon. But I don't think she's trans. I don't, I don't no, think so. No, I don't know. And she's never said it. I mean, if she was, she would have. I mean, why wouldn't she have? mentioned that if she was I mean no I, I think no, there was a lot of rumor yeah and also there's another rumor that she was born in Transylvania <laughs> <or so. laughs> yeah. there uh, is there's also said she was born in Hong Kong yeah exactly so yeah and she said it's also the red somewhere she was a waiter in Oslo yeah so uh, but you know no what, one knows yeah she's you know. very mysterious but she who cares 
Yeah. She's a great artist. For she's me. a great I artist. I think she's yeah. really great. And it's it's funny we talked about her. You were listening to her radio on on um, on the because her on radio Spotify. is so good. There's so much nice music there, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of Amneta. Yeah. Abba, from Abba, yeah. From Abba, and there's a lot of Demi Rousseau. Mm -hmm. I think he's also nice with that voice. <laughs> So I, I have a really good time making my mandrilla embroidery and listening to the Amanda Lear radio. Mm -hmm. And like, you're doing a few more. You're doing. Um, I saw a giraffe. There's more. Don't don't tell. Oh, okay. Oops, sorry. There's I'm more coming. I'm gonna surprise coming. the viewers with yeah. all the new and, animal. And then this is not a tutorial, but um, Arne and I, we went when we were in the U.S. the last time, which must have been in 2019. Yeah, when we were in Taos. There was a small museum there where they had a show, um, an exhibition by Judy Chicago, which is also an amazing artist, one of our favorites. If you're ever at the Brooklyn Museum in, um, in New York, mm -hmm. New York City, if you ever go to the Brooklyn Museum, you have to see her installation of her, um, of her dinner party. That's it's, cool. That is amazing. She's a wonderful artist. And uh, when she does her embroidery, she always uses the masking tape uh, yeah. around like that. So uh, we're very inspired by her. I, before, when I did embroidery, I didn't have put on anything. No. Sometimes I used the sewing machine and made a zigzag to keep the. But we like doing thread. that. But then I saw that, and I think people have so told us there are something you can buy. Yeah, but I like the masking tape but better. I, I prefer. I like the masking tape. It's so cool, and we have a lot of masking. You always yeah. have masking. It's probably cheaper than tape. whatever else you can buy. So, for it's it. It's kind of cool. Mm. I like it. But this is so not nice. Maybe by the time the video is out, I have finished the pillow and people can get it. Yeah. From the web shop. Mm -hmm. You never know. But I have a problem with the blue because when I pick the blue, there are oh, yeah. two blue colors on the face, like on this one. Mm -hmm. And picking colors from the color card on the computer is really hard. Very hard. So I missed, I was. I missed on two colors. There's a green one and mm. a blue one. So mm. I have to go through the color card one more time yeah. and order new, a new blue and a new green. Mm -hmm. Maybe I have to have two or three different tones to be sure. Yeah. Because it's it's really difficult to see the real color. Yeah, it's always like that. I mean, I'm sure everybody can relate. You want to paint a room and you go to the paint shop and you look at a swatch this big with a color and you say, oh, I love that color. It's going to look gorgeous yeah. on, on my walls. You buy all that paint, you know, like a bucket this big, very expensive. You go home, you paint the room and you look at it and you're like, what is this color? I'm sure yeah. because this happens to us all the time, um, all the time, Arna. Yeah. And it's so frustrating. And, and then we discovered this brand, Faro and Ball. They have these, they sell these little these little tins like this big and you like can buy a nothing. tin and you can go home and you can paint a plank of wood and then you can actually see that's actually what very the, good yeah that's actually good that actually is even if that paint is very expensive it saves you money because you don't buy a lot two of you don't buy one and then another one to paint over and the good thing is with those small boxes mm. because if you get a lot of samples like we do yeah. We use the paint in the dollhouse. In the dollhouse, yeah. And another one is swatches for fabric. That's also, you know, you look at a swatch this big and then you order the fabric. And then when you get like that much, you're like, what is this? Because it's not <laughs> what that. Yeah. No. So it's always a problem, yeah. really. It always, it's but always a good thing, a like when we, do, when, when we do design for embroidery, you know, like all the this um, tapestry wool yarn, mm -hmm. they have so many colors. There's so many choices of every color, yeah. especially when we work, like on this, we work with the leaves. Mm -hmm. It's so difficult to find the right green. Yeah. But then again, the more we order, the more we can do the embroidery yeah, because yeah. we can always use the colors we don't use now for another project. For something project. else, yeah. So, so, and I mean, it's nice to have like a whole bunch mm -hmm. of Embroidery. You're doing it with DMC, and you're embroidering with their wool yeah, the, thread, right? The, the tapestry wool. Tapestry wool. Yeah, it's a really nice. And I, I, I like this canvas because it. It's a great canvas. It came out bigger, but we had to go to the arts and crafts shop and ask what it's called. I think it's um, they call them something uh, based on the the, the number holes, yeah. of threads. So I will 
bring the piece. Yeah. And and the canvas is wider than than the pillow, so there's a little leftover, mm. and we're gonna use that, I think, for the cruise, oh. for the knitting cruise. Yeah. Because we have. Some, yeah, but that's a surprise. Yeah, but we have an idea. Some people that listen to this show, they may actually go on the cruise, so we can. So you have that. something to look forward oh, yeah. to. Surprise. Yeah, other than that, it's been a very exciting <laughs> week. We've had a lot of uh, fun stuff in the mail. Um, and yeah, I thought for this uh, section of our podcast, I thought I'd dress up. I nicely. don't think you think of, thought about it. Of course I, I do. I think this is a coincidence. It's not a coincidence. Is it? No. Oh. So we got our Rowan magazine in the mail. Um, and ta da 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 da. I am matching the magazine today so in I my can... yellow. Yeah. You're so matching, matching. Mm. Look, this is. We are actually on the cover. Yeah, so it's it, not a our design. It's not us. It's a girl. <laughs> yeah, but it's our design. Yeah. This is how we can say we are on the cover. We are on the cover of the <laughs> Rowan magazine. For those of you who uh, who don't know, we uh, we have been working uh, with Rowan for uh, many years now, since 2017. We are uh, their designers. Uh, one of their designers. And we do uh, a lot of stuff for them, both for the magazine and also standalone um, patterns. Um, and yes, as Arne was saying, this is uh, a sweater that we have done uh, for Rowan. And uh, it's always fun when they put our stuff on the cover. It's this the is second time. It's the second time it happened. So, um, but you also do the, the catalogs yeah. with our yarn, then it's always our design on the cover. Yeah, and the theme, is the theme of the magazine is joy because uh, it says it here because it's kind of supposed to be joy now that um we're seeing the hopefully the end of the pandemic i guess uh, but this was before but this was before the war the war here in in, in ukraine yeah so it's not that joyous it's not jo that joyous no but maybe we need some joy but we do need because some joy. we have to continue to live our yeah. lives so. And then we've got a little feature as well in the magazine, um, as you can see here. Uh, and we've got these two designs. So do they have names? They usually do. Uh, Wait, did, we, did we forget names this time? No, no, no. They always put names on the <laughs> designs. So let's see. It's called... Oh, I don't know. No, it's maybe model one and two. They don't have names. Anyway, these are our designs. This is a... A really nice uh, jacket with a floral design but in very pale colors and then the sweater that you saw and they also asked us to submit a collage or a mood board which we did and you can see that there so that is our mood board and our collage and that was the inspiration be behind the two yeah. designs that we made and it's so fun because when we work with Rowan we we do the drawing and put the measurements and and the charts and the charts and in this case we also knitted the, some swatches but then they do all the the pattern yeah making the work mm. with the pattern and the grading and everything and I have to say they are really good when it comes yeah. to pattern making because and they also have really good knitters i was looking at the jacket this jacket was very nicely knitted yeah yeah yeah. they're great the knitters that so knit i was for very happy really when i saw, saw this one because it's yeah. it's very nice knitted mm. so it's always fun when these magazines yeah. come in the post I and it's always nice, nice when we when we see a design that we made and that is on the cover actually we submitted these for s such a long time ago, a, a year ago actually, and, and then when we see them, actually I had forgotten that we'd actually yeah. designed that. But do they have, it's called, is it called collage? Hmm. Oh, it's called collage. Collage. So they called it collage. And scrapbook. Scrapbook oh, because and Because we, we posted this, it's called scrapbook. Yeah. Because when you see the, the collage we sent was actually two pages from one of our scrapbooks or yeah. our art journals because I think we work in a bit, a little bit different Very way different. than the others because we didn't show any swatches. If no. you, when you look at this picture, this is just pages from a scrapbook. Yeah things that has inspired us yeah and I think we design. have I think we have more of an abstract approach to these so-called mood boards um, so they're more abstract and artistic maybe 
um, in a way, and more open to interpretation. They're not so... Um, yeah, for us, like a, a mood board in the book, like in the scrapbooks like this, is something we can use many times yeah. because we put things we like in the picture and things that we, like, we think they go nice together. Mm. So it's kind of... Um, it's like a collage. Yeah. Well, that's what it is. It's a collage <laughs> with a lot of things. Are these new? Yeah, because uh, I think it is time now to start to sow some seeds. I've oh, been nice. trying to clean the greenhouse because this year I think we should be Ooh. earlier. But this is all perennial. Now. Yeah, very nice. That. Because I have a, have a plan with the kitchen garden. Okay. I think I told you. Yes. We should but mix. Let's tell everybody as well. Yeah, because we should mix vegetables with flowers. Oh, that's nice. Like we saw, was that in Sissinghurst in Kent, in the garden, the kitchen garden in Sissinghurst? Yeah. That was so nice. So you've got this, uh, these lovely Lycilia peach. Yeah. So this is core. What's that in? Cabbage. In cabbage. I haven't seen this one before. It's a... Uh, it's nice. It's a... Uh, bouquet bloom. Mm. It's, it's a kind of a cabbage I haven't seen before. And then I, we will mix with different um, perennials. Per, perennials. There's some poppies as well yeah. that look really pretty. But so we're gonna get those. All of these flowers are perennials. This is uh, like this one. These white ones, and this is like a cynia. Yeah, very nice. Like that one. So th we're gonna start now to. So these things. I also look, looked for. Uh, um, Oops. What's that good one we had? We had last summer. We had broccolini. Broccolini. Last yeah. year we had so many we didn't eat them. Yeah. Because we. we I don't know what happened, but suddenly they were blooming mm. and we, we were too late. We don't know if you have those in your country, but here in Norway you get this broccolini, which is a cross between broccoli and some Chinese vegetable that I don't remember the name. So basically, what you get is some very tall broccoli. Um, and instead of coming like a chunky one like that, they're kind of tall like this. And they're really, really they delicious. They almost look like this. They almost look like this, like this one. But not quite. But not quite. But they're like... Because they're green. They're green like yeah. broccoli. They are really delicious. So, so if things go after plans, we will have a beautiful kitchen garden. A part of what's supposed to be a kitchen yeah. garden. So and our garden season will begin soon, I guess. I mean, we still have some snow, but, uh, yeah. uh, you know, it'll be time to clean, clean the greenhouse uh, or, or tidy it up a little yeah. bit soon. And we have to start planting this so that we can get it all um, under, you know, But we have process. some traveling to do, so we have to plan this very yeah. carefully because we have to ask some friends. We can ask can someone to come and water come them. Come and water yeah. them every now and then. Mm because we can't go away too long yeah so but this year i have big plans for the kitchen garden yeah and i think you wanted to court uh, our neighbors down the road yeah i'm gonna invite them yeah for coffee or tea or yeah. a glass of wine and ask, and ask them ask kindly them kindly would you please would you please go and check the greenhouse yeah that's what neighbors are for i mean we do it for them if they ask us yeah. wouldn't we yeah. But you need neighbors to do that. You do, yeah. yeah. So anyway, that's, uh, that's going to be exciting to start getting our garden all together. And then I can't wait to go to Italy to get the... Um, we're organizing a garden tour uh, this year in May and we're going to Italy to get the uh, inspiration for, uh, I don't know... What. I'm so excited. But there's so many beautiful gardens in Italy. Yeah. Um, and, so um, that will be so nice. Yeah, and it's nice. We've got a group together. Um, by the time we talk about this, it may be already full. Um, last time but I checked, not, there you, were... But you can always put yourself on the waiting list. Yeah, last time I checked, there were like a couple of spots available, but it might be full now. But anyway, the trip is happening, which is great. We had the minimum already a while ago, the minimum quantity of people. And, um, and it will be wonderful to go to Italy together with the group and travel down to to see all the gorgeous gardens uh, mm. near Rome, Florence, and uh, by the Italian lakes. I think we need some inspiration. Share some inspiration with uh, our fellow uh, garden uh, devotees or garden yeah. people. And most yeah. of the good gardeners we know also knit. So win-win situation for all. Yeah. 
We'll be designing a little knit something for the bus. So if so they want, if they they want, want to knit, knit on the knit. bus if while not, we go from place to place. Yeah. So you don't have to knit. So you don't have to, no. no. And uh, yeah, and then we have plans uh, prior to the tour. Uh, so the tour starts uh, on May 26th. Mm -hmm. But before the tour starts, Arne and I plan to go to Venice to the biannual, the yeah. Biennale, La, Biennale, La Biennale, to see uh, the pavilions and to see the modern art yeah. that we love so much. So that's that'll also be, inspiring. That'll be a nice little pre uh, thing before yeah. we. I think going to going to, uh, and look at art and antiques and thrift shops. That's the most inspiring. Thing. Yeah, for our work, it's very important. Uh, we. I mean, going to museums and, and uh, art exhibitions is a, a big part of our inspiration. And then we come up with ideas for new designs based on what we see in those kind of uh, yeah. places. So, so. Um, it's very important. Um, and then when we're not designing uh, nowadays, we are uh, working hard because we have to finish uh, that folk costume jacket. If, you were, if you've been following us from the beginning, you know that we started making our folk costumes under lockdown because we were going desperate and we were going cray cray, cray, -cray. lockdown in this house uh, in 2020. So uh, by the end of 2020, we had produced uh, each a shirt, yeah. a beautiful waistcoat and uh, knee trousers in addition to the knitting, knitted stockings and the garter bands. Uh, and, then, and then we stopped. Yeah. And, and we didn't happened. do anything with this fall costume last year. Uh, but this year, we really want to get them done for Constitution Day, which is uh, May 17th. And I have already uh, decided that we are going to be able to make it on time. I think we are. Yeah. Because we are, we've done a lot lately. Yeah, the progress has but been... Is, yeah, so here's my jacket. We have actually... We are starting now to fit the sleeve in the yeah. armholes because this is very different from normal tailoring. Yeah, so here's my jacket. Uh, it's, uh, it's already sewn. Uh, the back panels, as you can see, the back panels have been sewn together. Uh, the side panels as well, so front and back are done. The sleeves have been put together. And then this little cape here that goes um, on the jacket is done. Mm -hmm. um, and now we have stitched the sleeve to the jacket so that we can start fitting the jacket and it's going to be fitted on me. And then Arne, you, you can show yours as yeah, well. Yeah, but it's, it's very different from what we've done before. Yeah. And look at all the stitching. Yeah. It's, it's so good because we can use all the old thread we have, yeah. which we can't use for sewing because it's getting more and more Mm. Like it's easy to break, but we just stitch all over the place to keep it together. And basically, so mine is black. Yeah, basically this uh, stitching on the front now is going to be cut out. Uh, it's holding together the inner lining, and then there's going to be a, a, a lining, a, a second lining here in silk. So we've already attached the temporarily attached the silk lining to the sleeve, so it's it's on the sleeves. Um, yeah, and uh, we've taken a, a break in, in the weekend because uh, we were working really hard on the jacket last week and you can't work non-stop on this, no, even though it is so much fun. Yeah, and uh, for this, the, the armhole and the yeah. sleeve, we needed to have a break because, it, as I said, it's yeah. so different from what we've done before because the armhole on the garment, on the body, is smaller than the yeah. armholes on the on the jacket on, on the, the sleeve. sleeve so you have to actually cut you the have to kind of fit the sleeve fit the sleeve and then you have to cut the armhole afterwards stitch it on and cut out fabric from so the, that from is the a armhole. risky thing yeah risky business so we had to take a break yeah. just and then an, tomorrow another thing that was worrying me a lot was because the jacket it will have the piping that you see here it's going to get it on the sleeves and there's a split as well on the um, on the sleeve so it's going to get it around the sleeve and the split and then it's going to get the piping um, all, all around the collar and then yeah. down here and not only does it have the red piping but it also has as you can see here an embroidery uh, the embroidery is this green one here um, yeah and I was very very nervous I think that that was very scary in a way because we have never done it before oh, and 
and and there was like there's no instruction on how to do it. It's it's oh, just sorry, said uh, you should uh, sew on, sew it on. Yeah. Just so so it on. And and I th when I saw how you did it, I'm I was a bit jealous because yours. I think is, yours is nice. Yours is more um, the green is more fluffy on yours. Yeah. I think I tighten mine more. So it and I eyeball. Yeah. I eyeball the silk yarn. Well, you found a technique where you actually go into the stitches from yeah. the stitching. Yeah. So your is perfect. Mine well, is eyeballed. I don't know. I think that. So. I think that when you're doing a, a handmade item, or a, in this case, a handmade, hand tailored piece of piece of clothing, I do believe that you put your own twist on that. And I think that um, you know, I do the stitches my way and they look a certain way and then you do your stitches your way and then they look a certain way i don't believe that one way is better than the other and i don't believe that one way is the right way and the other is the wrong way the the end result is quite similar and i like the idea of there being a little bit of a personality to I the garment i think it should be like when we went to satisdal yeah. and did that this series from satisdal and we looked looked at all those embroideries there was variations. Yeah. So I think that should be a part of the folk costume. Yeah. That is, that it's it very important. Be, it's not machine made. I don't think made. there's a rule. No. But of course, when you wear it, there probably be someone who will come up and say, "Oh, oh look oh, at how you've done you your embroidery." Have done it like that, and then I think. But I don't believe say, that's right. I, I then I would say, "Go and make your own yeah, jacket." Yeah, exactly. Why don't you go make your own jacket? <laughs> Why don't you go and make your own jacket and see what happens? No, but I believe in. I believe in. I believe in individuality, and I believe in the the possibility to put your own twist. I have to say, though, I mean, on paper it sounded really easy. Take the Moulinet thread thread or the moulinet, the, the DMC moulinet thread, make it double and then attach it to the fabric with, with the, the silk, silk uh, thread. That sounds really easy, but uh, it's not. And um, it's always those simple things, like the real simple things that are the hardest to yeah. make. I have to say, I started this thing 20 times and I kept Me ripping too. it up, starting and ripping, and I was not in a good place no. until, until I started to get the hang of it. But we, um, were, we used this book and this picture, so we were like checking how it yeah. looked on the picture. So that's what we tried to copy. And we also took pictures of the jacket in the shop. So we had we had those things to look at. And yeah. we had I think we took two telephones to the shop to yeah. have some ask some questions. Yeah. And right now I think we know everything. Yeah. And my biggest problem is because if I eyeball things, I don't get them right. I mean. Either I make it crooked, it's not straight lines, and I, you know, the distance will be really weird. And I was, but because of the piping, because you have to sew and then you have to stitch it down. So along the red piping, there is uh, the stitch from the sewing machine. And what I was doing was I was sticking my needle in, I was counting every other stitch. Yeah. And that way I was able to get. Um, that kind maybe of maybe I should take my own. no I don't believe you should I think you should leave it and it's your own it's my signature. it's your signature and then because it's only on the top if you want to do the front the way I, I, I no it has to be the same I can't do diff two different stitches okay so then do it your so way I have to do it my yeah. way or I have to take it out and do it over again well, I'll, I'll leave that up to you. I can't decide what you're going to do, but I don't think that the way you did it is wrong, and I think that it looks uh, right. I don't think it's wrong. And it looks beautiful, and it's your way of doing it, and that's what counts, I think. I think... It's most important is that you've done it. Yeah, I that's the most important it. thing. And, um, yeah, and we were talking to a friend yesterday. We went over to our neighbors to have, um, to have a little drink with her, and... Uh, we have a, a mutual friend who, who was there spending the weekend and uh, she's also made her own folk costume. The difference between us and her, I mean, Arne has a tailoring background, which actually helps a lot. She doesn't. Um, and she spent two years making her folk costume. And she had four courses. She had to take classes yeah, to classes. do it. Uh, but she has this great conversation piece. Every time she wears it, she, you know, s somebody in her family will say, to whoever you know the stranger that she just met is she made her own full costume yeah. and then they have a great conversation for hours right yeah. and i'm thinking it's a great conversation piece that you're wearing the best thing that you have and it's actually something you made yourself yeah so so yeah 
And this is easy compared to the embroideries. This embroidery yeah. is easy it's compared quite, to the embroidery. Yeah, from the, the women's. women's. Yeah. yeah, the women's. But I found this jacket today because, like, this is the jacket I made for you when you went to that wedding. Yeah. It's a black jacket, but on the inside we had the lining. This lining I found in my grandmother's attic many years ago. So this is old lining. Yeah. And I used it on your jacket. Mm. But I took it out because the lining on the for this jacket is made more or less the same way. Yeah, with, with the, the pockets. two pockets. The, the jacket is going to have two pockets yeah, too. Yeah, exactly like I did on this one. Yeah. This one also has two pockets. Will they have this in, in wool as well? I think it's in the lined uh, fabric. What do you call it? The silk? The silk the, lining the fabric. Lining. Ooh, that's going to be difficult. This is... I used the wool. You did, one. yeah. But we could, mm -hmm. if we wanted to, or we could use an alternative fabric yeah. for the passepoir. If we wanted to, we could. We could, yeah. But this is maybe we this should. is the way we did this jacket. Arne, maybe we should. Yeah, maybe. But you do you know the jacket the way we did this jacket is much, so much more easy than this jacket yeah. because for this one we made the pattern mm. ourselves and we put notches everywhere so yeah. so all the seams fit together so mm. you can just sew it. This one you have to think yeah a lot i was very so, frustrated because i was trying the jacket on before the sleeves and i felt that the sleeves were very tight and i the the opening was so tight and i couldn't understand it until arne took i thought that. there was something wrong yeah. with the armhole and then and then she said yeah. uh, by phone you fit the sleeve first and then you pin it you pin it on off. and then when the sleeve is perfect you go in and you start cutting the excess fabric around the armhole uh, like that yeah. so eventually it will fit and hopefully it will be beautiful we hope so fingers crossed but there's a lot of extra fabric yeah. everywhere because if you if you gain weight and you have to make it bigger yeah well, there's extra fabric in the sides on the back panel i think it was and you know that the problem isn't the weight gain because that doesn't happen very often. The problem is that this, the clothing, they, they have a tendency to shrink. Especially wool. Especially wool, when Especially you don't use costumes. it. Yeah, when you don't use it too often, it shrinks. It shrinks in the, in closet. the closet. So, so that's uh, the problem. Yeah, the we shrinking. We have some anti-shrinking stuff. Yeah, so. Uh, joking. <laughs> <laughs> Just say joking, in yeah, case. Yeah, kidding. Kidding. But any, anyway, yeah, it's uh, it's a fun thing to do. I have to say the embroidery isn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. But in the beginning, I was super frustrated. I can't say I love it because um, when I'm going to start embroid embroidering this jacket again, I can't wait until it's done. When you do the all the way up in the yeah. front and around the and neck, that, yeah, and you know that that, that little that little thing here, attaching the the green thread with the silk thread, that took me about an hour to do yeah, you will spend one day maybe on, on the, this you thing. think maybe so that'll be my and then I was thinking I'll do that in the end but no because according to the instructions which we are reading and doing exactly as it says yeah, we follow yeah the you follow the instructions now it's the time to do and I think you have to do it before you line it anyway yeah so, so I think the next step now is... It's not like you do the whole jacket and then embroider it. No, but I no. think next step now is to make the armhole big enough for the sleeve. Yeah. And then we're going to stitch the sleeves into the armhole. And then we're going to put the red, the piping, red piping on the on sleeve. On the bottom of the sleeve. And then and, and we're going to make the split. And make the split and do the embroidery. And sew the buttons. And the buttons. That's what it says. That's before we sew the sleeves. Yep. And so everything is in the in the, is some of the things are in a very strange order mm -hmm. because when we did your jacket we just sew the front yeah. the outside together and then the inside was sewn together and it was mm -hmm. just sewn together and you turn it inside out and it's finished i'm gonna so, try that jacket on and see if i can put it on um i believe it's shrunk I haven't Take put. It. But we have a grand nephew. He's going to have his confirmation. Maybe he needs a suit. We can. Yeah. We can just put. The, go bring it to the dry cleaner. Yeah. Oh, that's this your. This was my label. That's your old label. We have, you have to show it. I put that on everything when I went to fashion school because, like, we ordered labels. You didn't go to fashion school. You went to the school of design. The school it's of different. design. It is a fashion school. Yeah. It? Well, so this is Arne's label. This is before Arne and Carlos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but we put that on the clothes so people yeah. knew. Let me try it on and see if it's shrunk. I'd probably be very disappointed now. 
Okay. You want to do that on camera? Yeah. Yeah, I want to show everybody the beautiful jacket you made for me 20 years ago. No, oh. you can still wear it. Oh, it's actually not too bad. You can even button it. Why don't you use the jacket I made for I you? I may. Oh, wow. We have the trousers as well. Oh, cool. I can oh, actually... You can use it. I'm actually very surprised, Arna, I have to say. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I still fit this in this jacket. Yeah, you do. Well, it's very nice. it is, there's a big opening on the... What? Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, okay. The slits. Maybe... <laughs> Maybe I don't fit quite, but it's still... Uh, when you sit, it looks good. It's still, yeah. Shoulders, I didn't shrink on. Uh, yeah, you can... I didn't, my shoulders didn't expand. And you can button it up. Yeah, I can. Wow. That's because there's a split. In kind of, the, sort of. What do you call that in the back? Slits? Yeah, split. Split. Okay. Yeah, so, you see? Yeah. This is now going into your wardrobe. Yeah, well, I've just cleaned my closet out, so... Uh. But very cool. Thank you for the jacket. You're welcome. Uh, and talking about cleaning the closet, I have some shirts that I bought because I like the patterns, but some of them are actually too short on the sleeves, but normally I didn't care because I was rolling them up. But then, of course, the body was, has been shrinking. The, the, the shirts, the not shirts. you. No, the shirts. The shirts have been shrinking, yeah. So I have some redesign projects coming up. Yeah. But. First, we have to finish the whole costume. Yeah, I'm going... And I just got some a good, really good idea, like, yesterday. You did? Yeah. And I'm not going to tell you now. Okay. I'm going to surprise you. So I think there will be too much information for you, because you have to think about the jacket. Mm. And if I bring out the redesign I'm working on, yeah. the house will be more messy than ever. Mm -hmm. I don't think you like that. Yeah. You want to have a little bit... Mm. Oh, shit, what's that? Yeah, I want to have a, like an overview. Of overview. It. Okay, yeah. yeah. So, Arne, tell me a little bit about... So, this pincushion here that you see is one of the things that we keep losing all the time. So, uh, so a, a classic conversation here when we are making our folk costume jacket. I'm usually by the iron when I'm not by the sewing machine I, because I am more of the... Iron person here. Yeah, I, I You're like, a little bit lazy. Actually, I, you really. are ironing almost everything I sew because I think it's so boring. Yeah, I do his ironing I'm not good too. At it, so. And then I do my sewing, but Arne helps me with the understanding the instructions because he has the tailoring background. Anyway, so a conversation here could be could go something like you know I'll I'll be ironing and say oh I have to open this seam up and then Arne will say where's the pin cushion mm -hmm. and then I'll be by the by the sewing machine sewing and Arne will be telling me the story of how Amanda Lear did this or that and then when Salvador Dali was alive and then I'll say yeah where's the pin cushion so we keep losing this pin cushion all the time and it's a precious valuable one. This is so one. precious actually I was thinking uh, that we should make a new one and frame this one yeah because this pin cushion was my great grandmother's it's really cool and I guess and she, she made it I guess she did it's just two pieces of fabric and it's stitched yeah. together very raw stitching it's really beautiful and though. it's filled with what is it filled with acrylic it's filled or with wool or maybe wool probably wool because wool maybe from from her sheep i yeah. guess but it's so old and you can like if you press it too hard there is like needles inside Coming out, yeah so I but think we, we keep should. losing it. We keep losing this every third minute. That and, is beautiful. And every time we, every time we lose it, Arne goes, <gasps> because it's really, uh, it's an heirloom, isn't it? Remember we made that uh, needle, the book, booklet yeah. for, uh, for ne sewing needles? I wonder what that is. Actually, it was gone. And I found it in that sewing table upstairs. Mm. Because I forgot about the sewing table, but we had, have actually bought the sewing oh, yeah, yeah. table. And the the needles were in that sewing table and i took them out and now they're gone <laughs> i really don't we didn't even yeah. did that we had i think we had that on the internet on the web shop as yeah, well yeah we do it's no like no not a, on the web shop but we had it once no we have it on the blog somewhere. on the blog it's like a booklet with embroidery cross stitches on front and then we have pages in um, mm. what's that fabric called filt 
yeah felt felted fabric yeah so you can put the same same similar as the jacket yeah but thinner yeah but it's gone yeah anyway it's a it's a beautiful delightful little thing that is an heirloom and uh Sometimes I think there are ghosts in this house who, when we're not looking, they hide the pincushion because every 15 minutes it's where's the pincushion. And the other day, I, I think I spent 20 minutes looking for it yeah, and it was on the table all the time. Yeah. And uh, yeah, there's, there's, some, there's a ghost here, I think. But we should, maybe we should actually frame this one and make a new one. Yeah, but it is lovely, isn't yeah. it? I want to make one with... Um like this embroidery fabric you know mm. not the canvas but the other one that is like for christmas things and mm. stuff it would be nice to make a little petit point with a little nice beautiful embroidery yeah exactly around. in petit point petit point yeah so arne our 15 minutes are almost uh, up i think actually yeah. i think maybe we passed 15 minutes and then some uh, so let's uh, stop because I have some very important things to do. Well, yeah, but remember we have those Easter yeah. eggs that we are showing every week. Uh, every week we're showing three eggs, but so maybe maybe we should do that and yeah. then stop. And then I can do the very important thing. What's that? Oh, more embroidery. More embroidery. Yeah. It's so fun. It's, it's so relaxing. Mm. So we're featuring uh, our Easter egg patterns for 2022. Uh, we've already shown six patterns, so we've got six more to go. So we'll be showing you three uh, patterns uh, today. Yeah. And then next Wednesday, we will be showing the last three. So I start. Okay. So this is the butterfly. That's very nice. This is knitted in gray and blue. And then you add the white and the red with the duplicate stitch. Yeah. And this year, all the eggs are knitted in the Norwegian wool, which is our yarn yeah. from Rowan. Because I think those colors were so nice. Yeah. And we have a plan, we're gonna felt them later. Mm. If they if it if they can be felt. Yeah. Because we tried and nothing happened. Yeah. But they, they should felt. Yeah, they should <laughs> felt. It's just We did that something wrong. We did something wrong, yeah. So uh, the second egg we're gonna show is this one here. Uh, and we are calling this one the red rooster. And Red Rooster is also um, a very nice restaurant up in Harlem, in New York City, in Manhattan. Yeah, we've been there. Yeah, and, and it's is actually... in Harlem? Yeah, it's in Harlem. And it's uh, run by Marcus Samuelsson, a Swedish... Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's still there? I don't know, but... Uh, once, the restaurant. We actually oh, went, is. I think we went to the opening. We did. And that was so cool, you remember? All the people wearing clothes from the 40s or fifties really cool, yeah. or something. That was so beautiful. This was in 2012. Yeah. And then we went to this bar, remember? Mm, the Lennox Lounge. The Lennox Lounge. But it doesn't exist anymore. And there was a, a lady singing the blues. Singing the blues. It was very nice. Yeah. Was so That's so cool. anyway, the Red Rooster, a great, uh, a great restaurant in New York City, <laughs> but also the name of uh, this Easter egg uh, with a knitted uh, Red Rooster on it. And this is the Chevron. Yeah. Oh. And I think Chevron is pretty self-explanatory what that is. Yeah. So it's but just it's very decorative pattern. It's a decorative pattern. Mm. So these are the three eggs of the day. Yeah. You can never have enough Easter eggs. Yeah. So Arne, uh, I think I'm gonna go and look at the presentation, the slides that we're know? gonna show for the for the show for the lecture that we're doing. Uh, we have to come up with a few more jokes uh, on uh, yeah on our life the past two years because it was pretty pathetic at one point, but it's getting better now again, which is mm -hmm. great. And yeah, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be the first time we speak to a big congregation of people. Uh, but all restrictions of COVID in Norway have already been lifted for a long time ago. And uh, things are actually yeah. pretty much back to normal now with no particular measures in place. So we'll see how it goes. I hopefully we'll get some laughs out of our audience yeah. and uh, inspire them as well because Maybe it's not they need only to laugh now with all yeah. the crazy things it's like not only normal. jokes but it's also the whole inspiration kind of thing yeah. and yeah and another thing we're going to be doing this week uh, we've got um, a video call with the US because we are looking into planning a little tour in uh, November this year yeah. Where we'll go, we don't know, and we won't tell until we know. Until we know, <laughs> but yeah, it looks like How we may we be exactly. Yeah, so it looks like we'll, we may be coming or going to the yeah. U.S. 
to tour a little bit. It won't be a very long tour because um, our duty is to sit in it for a bit. So if we travel too much, then we can't do the podcast. So we'll do a little, like a short tour and um, so that we can keep doing this instead. And remember, we still have those patterns on our web shop if you want to support Save the Children. Yeah. Because they are working right now, they're working to help people or kids, in Ukraine. Kids, kids yes. from Ukraine, but they also help people all over the world. And yeah. all the money that we get from the sales is going to save the children. Yeah, and I've already and gotten buy. I've already gotten the bills uh, for uh, January, February. So we've already sent uh, something like. Uh, I think it was about six thousand dollars. We've already sent that to save the children, so thank and you. we got an invoice, and it actually said on the invoice that this is earmarked for Ukraine. So thank you so much for your support. That was January and February, which we actually did retroactively because we decided that we're going to let all the proceeds go to this, and then for March is going to be quite a, a nice sum of money, um, mm. around maybe ten thousand yeah. dollars. So we want to thank all of you for your support um, with Save the Children and uh, yeah, we're going to be sending them that and then we're going to keep sending uh, money because we're going to let the proceeds uh, of the patterns uh, go to Save the Children this year. Yeah. So that's oh, not all the patterns, just the three ones that are earmarked or marked with... Which we made mid- for the same. Yeah, year. and which we designed for Save the Children originally. Every year we actually do send the proceeds, 10% or 12 This year we're sending the whole thing. Minus the, the taxes, of course, we can't send that. But anyway, so it's uh, it's the three, the sweaters for kids, adults, and the mitts and the hats. Mitts? Yeah, mittens <laughs> that are marked with the hashtag knit for Ukraine and the Ukrainian flag. So if you purchase those, you get, you can knit yourself a beautiful heirloom piece and know that you are contributing directly to their work in Ukraine. Yes. So, Arne, how about some formalities? It's your formalities turn. Formalities is like if you like our videos, put your thumbs up and put on the not- notifications, especially if you're a subscriber, because then you won't miss the episode. And that's it. Yeah, and please subscribe to our channel. Yeah. And Best way to find out where we are going to be traveling uh, is if you get on our newsletter or our mailing list. You can do that by visiting our website arnicarlos.com. We've got great patterns there as well for you to enjoy. We've got a lot of patterns uh, so we can keep you busy for quite some time. And uh, yeah, uh, as I said, the best way to keep in touch with us is through the newsletter. So thank you so much for watching and we will see you again with a new tutorial on Sunday because we do tutorials every Sunday and then there's going to be a new episode of Sit In It For A Bit next Wednesday. So see you soon. Bye. Bye!